Bayern Munich taking on Borussia Dortmund. Jan Fjortov and Jürgen Klinsmann with us to discuss Bayern's 3-2 win. Hey, Jürgen, this is a fun game to watch. Oh, it was a very entertaining game to watch. I mean, it's a, it's a one-off, obviously, and, and all you wish for is uh, uh, a few goals. And we saw five very, very nice goals. And, uh, and I think the served winner with Bayern Munich, they were just a little bit sharper. They were a bit more determined and, and, uh, and aggressive, and they badly wanted to have uh, this, this little trophy. You know, it's not a big trophy, but it's still a trophy, and uh, congratulations to them. Uh, Jan, what was interesting after that defeat against Augsburg, we were critical of uh, Borussia Dortmund. And you felt when they went 2-0 down in this tie that their heads were dropped, but they didn't. Obviously, they rallied, they got it back, conceded that late goal, brilliant goal from Kimmich. But it was good to see from a Dortmund point of view some spirit today. It was, and I mean, that speaks for them. And that's the positive thing that you can take out of it if you're a Dortmund fan, that you are coming back. Having said that, I think that you saw the big difference between Bayern Munich and Dortmund and Fadre at 2-2. And they have the 3-2 on the feet from Haaland. Neuer, brilliant save from him. Then he starts taking people out of the game yeah. to save themselves for the Freiburg game on Saturday. I mean, what are you doing? Yeah, it's a bit of a head-scratcher, Jürgen, isn't it? I understand, you know, you could say this is a glorified friendly and maybe the Bundesliga is more important, but you get a chance here to win a bit of silverware, to defeat your closest rivals, yet you take off Haaland. Yeah, I was surprised myself. I mean, this is, uh, this is the, the Bayern Munich mentality. It's, uh, it's always about winning trophies. And even if that trophy is not the biggest one to win, it's comparable to the League Cup in, in England or in other countries... Um, it's still a trophy, and when he took off Haaland, uh, I think he has surprised everybody uh, because Haaland had a little bit of a go at, at Neuer. You know, he, he scored one goal, then he missed another big chance, and there was more to come, and if there was one player on the field from the Dortmund end that could really give some problems uh, to Bayern Munich, then it was Haaland. So, so, yeah, so it didn't work out at the end of the day. Uh, they never really created chances anymore after that substitution, and... Uh, and uh, here goes the last, a lost trophy. Uh, yeah, and you were watching it with Haaland's dad, weren't you? He must have taken it well when his son was taken off. Let's put it this way. It was successful because I think that... Uh, I'm not think I'm doing really any secret, but he should play 60 minutes. So he got 66. And uh, I think that it just shows you the mentality. It's no coincidence, that goal from Kimmich. You can say it is a coincidence that he hits his foot and everything. But that is the will... And these guys have now in three months won five trophies. Mm. And Favre is thinking of the game against Freiburg. I mean, taxi for Favre. You can't do that. <laughs> these young players need to win trophies. And in two years' time, when they've been at Dortmund, everybody says, oh, well, they play some good football, but they have to move on to win trophies. <laughs> so they lost that, but all praise to, to Bayern. This win to win trophies. And Jürgen was a part of that. He said it himself. He left Tottenham to win trophies with Bayern. Just tells you the story. Uh, is, is Jan overreacting, Jürgen? <laughs> no, no, I think Jan is totally right because uh, it's, it's really, it's, it's about winning things. It's about growing as, a, uh, a, as an organization, you know, and have this uh, drive, this hunger um, to, to get those, those trophies. And, and uh, for Dortmund, it's, it was really an important game. I mean, you can always say it's in the beginning of the season and, and you don't have a rhythm yet and you need to get some minutes for players that are a little bit behind, but that's not the moment for it. In a, in a cup final, um, you have to go for it. And uh, when he did that substitution, he brought some players on that needed more minutes. You can do that in the next upcoming games. You know, over the stretch of a season when you play then 34 Bundesliga matches, that's the time when you can play, bring players in and, and give them some minutes. But in a one-off cup final, it's not the moment, and it's, it's unfortunate because I'm sure that uh, thousands of uh, Dortmund fans were, were hungry for a, a trophy, and they're always hungry, obviously, for a win against the big, big rival Bayern Munich, so it's, it's a pity for them. Uh, not obviously just on the back of today's result, but the loss at the weekend, Favre coming out afterwards, and he said he didn't see anything wrong with his team's performance. Is Favre okay in this position, Jan? Can he handle it? Well, I think he can handle it, but I think that you, you can be a bit found out. I think what we saw against Augsburg, and uh, you saw some of the young kids, uh, your kid, Raina, our kid, Haaland, they were the ones who were fighting, battling. And these are young kids. And Augsburg just showed what a mental, strong, physical team they were in that game. And if 
And if Dortmund gets found out, I mean, that is a bad, that is bad timing for, for Favre. Do I think that he will sit there next season? I am not sure. I am not sure. I, I just got a feeling that someday that you, Nagelsmann will be the coach there. Uh, from a coaching perspective, Jürgen, how do you handle what we saw happen to Borussia Dortmund against Augsburg, where pretty much they, they were bullied out of the game? Well, for, for a coach, it's always um, a very difficult task, obviously, to, to grow a team over a certain time period in making it a, a contender, you know, to win trophies. And uh, um, if you have such uh, talented young players like Dortmund has coming through the ranks, especially we obviously from a U.S. side, we are watching Giovanni uh, Reina so, so closely. Um, you wish that there's a group growing now, probably already with a kind of a leader with Haaland um, that is for his age, unbelievably mature, then, then uh, these, these, these type of youngsters, they need to, to yeah, start believing into winning um, trophies. You know? And uh, that's why I think you know, it, it was a, a very crucial moment today because um, these kind of um, mental games that you, yeah, that you face off with, a, with your biggest rival, Bayern Munich, who obviously now in the last couple of months did incredible things, you know, those mean a lot, you know. Now go, going back to to Dortmund now uh, as a losing team, mm. it's n it's not good for the growth of the youngsters because they, they, they these youngsters they need to have the feeling that okay they can do it, you know. But sooner or later you gotta do it. So it's a very very big missed opportunity today, and and uh, and for Favre as well. I mean, also as a coach, you know, you are measured over time uh, 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 with trophies. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's sad to see that they, were, they didn't take that chance today. And the concern I would have from a, from a Dortmund's fan point of view, Jan, is the fact that these players aren't going to be sticking around forever. Jaden Sancho, we know, will be here for the rest of the season, probably gone afterward. Haaland as well, you would expect to move on at some stage. These kids aren't going to be there for the duration. Big picture, you need something done, don't you, quickly from a Dortmund perspective, if you're going to win trophies with these kids. Exactly, and it looks like a young, young dream team, and they're doing ever so well. But you're like Jurgen said, you are you are measured on trophies, and you had a look after the game today, and you saw the enjoyment of Alfonso Davis, a young, the rookie of the year in the Bundesliga. Now he got five trophies, and you can imagine when these guys they meet up, they meet at different events, or uh, some some of them meet Sancho or whatever, meet up with his teammates somewhere else in Liverpool. They are winning trophies all the time, and then. The Dortmund players got to say, well, we play good football. That is not good enough in the long term. Mm. And the Dortmund coaches know this. And they have to keep the players. And you just keep them to have them winning trophy and giving them self-confidence through winning trophies. How do you do that, though, Jürgen? How do you change that mentality? Well, it's, it's, it's a process that the whole team is going through over, over time. Um, and it's, it's, it's a culture that is developed. And I think their, their role model is really Bayern Munich because Bayern Munich over the last 30, 40 years developed a culture of, of extreme hunger, of extreme determination. Uh, even if they play maybe here and there a bad game, um, they're going to win at the, at, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of the day. So... Um, it is. It's, you, you grow your core group, as and you make your core group as strong as you as you can. And I think the core group at Dortmund is changing at the moment. They are in a transition there with, uh, uh, obviously, with Haaland being a young leader there, with uh, Gio Giovanni Reina coming in, with other youngsters that really try to kind of now uh, um, be the face of that club. You know, the older players like, like such as Mat Matthias Hummel, for example. Um, they are there, they give stability, um, but the real leaders are already the younger ones. So, so uh, in order for them to grow as fast as possible and, and as successful as possible, they obviously need, need to be on the field all the time. They need to get uh, used to a rhythm playing basically every three, four days because that's the rhythm of a so-called Champions League player. Mm. You know, there is, uh, at the end of the season, you play 55, 60, or even 65 games, and you got to get used to that, you know. So... Um, so that is, this is the task for our coaching staff, you know, to decide then at the end of the day, who do we give the faith to? Who do we give the belief to that they can go really every three, four days? And we don't have to necessarily rotate them because if you look at the biggest clubs in, in the world, they barely rotate their, their top eight, nine, ten players. You know, there might be a change, one or two, but that's it then. And this is the, um, the delicate job for the coaching staff at Dortmund this year.
From a Bayern perspective, obviously they suffered losing at home against uh, losing at Hoffenheim at the weekend after that Super Cup defeat. Could we see history repeat itself on Sunday when they take on Hertha Berlin, Jurgen? Do you think we could see that tiredness once again kick in? Well, there will always be moments where you know the they uh, um, maybe have a bad day or the opponent has a really, really good day. There are, there are days where you can beat Bayern Munich. But what Bayern Munich carries in themselves is, is just this, this inner hunger, but also this, this sense of responsibility that when they have a bad game, they make sure that the next one is a good one. So they, they kind of correct each other. Um, the, the players are always driven to go to the next game. So I expect now the next game taken very seriously by Bayern Munich. And, and, uh, and then they go for you know, another title in the Bundesliga. So it's part of their culture. It's just th the way they, they live it day in, day out. Um, and, and that's why they are at the moment, really at the moment, the number one team in the world. Uh, switching gears completely, Jürgen, I just wanted your opinion on Serginho Des. Obviously, reports saying that he's having his medical at Barcelona. Well, what do you make of this move? I mean, this is a fantastic moment for, for U.S. soccer. It's a fantastic moment for, for, for us here in the United States. See, seeing this youngster going from Ajax to a club like Barcelona. And obviously, he didn't grow up here in the United States. He grew up uh, in in Holland and and um, and this situation is just for us the best thing that could happen that he's ca kept tied to the United States going forward because he's just so incredibly talented and also this this move to Barcelona and also to, be, to go to a coach with Ronald Koeman now at Barcelona that knows him really well that that saw him coming through the ranks he uh, uh, he was watched in Holland you know every every weekend there it's, it's exciting this is Big exciting news! It's exciting news, like you know, Wes McKinney going to mm. to Juventus Turin, or like Christian Pulisic going to Chelsea, coming from Dortmund to Chelsea. This is this is big. I mean, this is can't can get any bigger than playing at Barcelona. Be fascinating to see how he gets on, gentlemen. And thank you very much as always for joining us. Well, the Bundesliga continues this weekend, as I mentioned. It will be Bayern Munich against Hertha Berlin. Berlin. That game live on ESPN Plus at 12 p.m. on Sunday. Meanwhile, Borussia Dortmund kick things off on Saturday at home against Freiburg. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.